My job this afternoon is to be the potential buyer's eyes and ears examining and driving this particular car which is obviously quite a rare and beautiful Rolls-Royce, a Corniche convertible derived as it is from the original Mulliner Park Ward Coupe. So the model traces its ancestry back to 1965, the introduction of the Rolls-Royce's first monocoque saloon car, which was the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow. That had a, a 6,230cc V8 engine, uh, which came uh, originally designed for the uh, Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. By the late 60s, uh, a special coach-built version of the Silver Shadow was available, which at the time was called a Mulliner Park Ward Coupe. Later, that evolved into what was known as the Corniche. And the Corniche stayed in production really long after the Shadow itself had ceased, the Shadow Saloon. There were various modifications uh, over the years, the later cars getting something called compliant suspension. This was essentially a Citroen designed floating on air almost type of hydro pneumatic suspension. And this particular example represents really the final the, the final specification, the ultimate specification for the Corniche, where it had, for example, uh, ABS brakes, which of course were quite new in the late 1980s. So we'll take it out for a drive and then I'll do a walk around so I can describe it in a bit more detail. I started the classic car business in 1991 and over the years, uh, I've had a lot of uh, Rolls-Royce Silver Shadows and quite a few Mulliner Park Ward Coupes and Corniches. And what that really enables me to do is to compare it with other cars that we've had and owned over the years. The best way to sort of summarise that would be to say, I know what a good one should be like. I know that we've sold this vehicle before. It's just done a, a continental a tour in Europe. Um, but this particular example uh, I haven't driven myself until until today. So let's see how it goes. Now these, like a Mercedes, have a foot-operated parking brake and that's released under here. I'll pop it into drive and away we'll go. Although it's quite blustery today, we do actually have a dry afternoon. So it's really quite a good, uh, quite nice conditions to take it out. The road we're gonna go on now is probably the nastiest piece of road that we've got in this area. Uh, it's where the truckers park up and they've basically destroyed the road surface so if it floats nicely across this section it'll be good. Very good, no rattles and squeaks there then. So the car started off with uh, a 6,230cc engine, a V8 engine designed for the uh, for the Silver Cloud, the early uh, the Cloud II. Uh, by this era, the engine was quite a bit bigger. It was 6,750cc, and and it was fuel injected. Well, that's an effortless. Uh, 40 miles an hour there. It does feel very um, very lively. The earlier cloud, clouds which had the carburetor engine, uh, they, they still performed well, but you get a sort of an immediate throttle response with these that you didn't really get uh, so much with the early cars. No bumps, no thumps, no rattles absolutely beautiful. The other thing that's worth pointing out about these later series cars is the original steering system was changed to rack and pinion steering uh, back in I think 1976 and it just makes the steering more modern, more precise. 
to be honest the early cars were a bit of a barge steering wise but don't quote me Now we're very fortunate here to have a national speed limit road so close to us. We're now going to go over a railway crossing and there you'd hardly know you'd gone over a bump like that. And I'll open the throttle a little bit. We've actually got a modern Jaguar that's just going a bit slow for me and away we go. Straight up to 60 just like that. They really are a fabulous touring machine. One of the things you do notice with a very well kept car like this is you notice how good the woodwork is because you can imagine where you've got a convertible car if they've been kept out in the weather even at times and there's any dampness got into it you'll see lots of vertical cracks in, in woodwork and uh, eventually the, 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 the finish starts to deteriorate. Not so on this car, we know from the history that it's been well looked after, it's spent part of its time actually in, in Spain. Uh, it's lovely, the condition's really, really good. One of the purposes of doing a road test like this uh, for a video is so that I can actually snag it and if I find any things that are wrong I can say to the, uh, I can actually use those uh, notes for the job card when we book the cars in for a service. All the cars that we sell are serviced and function checked. More modern cars like this are given an MOT. They actually have quite a good lock, it's very good for a car of this age. So we're at, we're now at normal operating temperature. The oil pressure, even at idle, is in the, in the white arc. Battery voltage is perfect. It's idling very smoothly. And I'm just going to accelerate quite briskly. So I'm literally now just moving off two or three miles an hour. I'm now going to open up the throttle. 30, 40, 50, into top gear, 60. That's how quick it is. Now during that part we were probably doing 10 miles per gallon. They quote about 13 mpg but in fact I've been able to get these up to 15 miles per gallon touring. Yeah it's lovely, very precise. I would say that the the handling on this feels quite a bit crisper than the early cars I've driven. I think I'm right in saying this would probably be the newest Corniche that I've ever driven. Most of the cars that I've, uh, uh, that we've owned over the years have been 1970s Corniches. And we now, by the time this was produced, the, uh, the car which followed the Shadow, which is the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit, had already been in production for almost eight years. So you really could say this was a, a kind of handmade car really, they were no longer, this shape of car was no longer in series production in the, uh, at the time this car was produced. Now I didn't expect to find any problems because I know that we'd prepared it for the last owner ready for his uh, European tour, um, but I can actually say having driven it for the first time myself. I can't find anything wrong with it. That is just exactly as they should be. Normally you don't see Rolls Royce has been driven quite as briskly as that, but they're perfectly capable of it. Got an unusual horn this. Somebody wanted to be heard.
And this is pothole after pothole here. And look at that, you wouldn't know it. I'll now park it up and we'll do a quick walk around video of the exterior and interior. Well, it is very, very windy, so I'm not sure what you can hear. But that engine is absolutely quiet. It's exactly as it should be. This model has hydraulic tappets. When you first start them, you might hear ticka ticka tick for the first few seconds. They, they also have something called a brake pump, which you can sometimes hear ticking for a few seconds. But by the time it's been running, it should be like this. No clattering, no ticking, just the low throb of the V8 engine. Beautiful. So for this last part I'm just going to do a, a walk around video now. Um, there's really not a lot that I can say, or certainly not a lot that I can criticise because whilst there are some dead flies on the, on the front of it, the paintwork is absolutely gorgeous. I mean it really is. And as you look down the panels of the car, they're so flat. For a car of this age, bear in mind it's, you know, it's sort of 35 years old, it's absolutely stunning. But yes, everywhere you look, absolutely beautiful. And one really remarkable feature of it really is the, is the interior because it takes some keeping up to to keep a light coloured interior as good as this. It's rather, obviously it's a bright, bright sunlight now so it looks, it looks very bright but uh, on the doors. They have this lower wood area which, veneer area which is, uh, which the shadows didn't have. A very special car. You see on the plate there, HRO in the Sublime Dealer and Mullingham Park Ward. It says coachwork by Rolls-Royce Motors. Rolls-Royce bought Mulliners and they bought Park Ward so that they did have their own in-house coach builders and they were actually making coach built cars on the cloud chassis right up until the early 1990s so the um, the phantom like the queen and queen mother had that that was a that was a coach built vehicle built on a chassis still still happening you know even after the time that this car was made so i, I can't really pick up on anything that i don't like Apart from there's a thread loose there on that uh, stitching, which I'll, we'll have to deal with. But everywhere you look, carpets, woodwork, all the trim, absolutely beautiful. There's a charging um, wire in the boot for the battery. Looks like there's just a little bit of a, a stain, that's almost like a bit of something, some glue or something that's been on there. So I don't know whether that would come off, but that's the only thing that I can see that detracts in the boot, as though something had been, uh, as though something had been spilled in there. There is a battery isolator switch. chrome lever underneath here which opens the bonnet. There we go. Actually it's not chrome on this at uh, this year, it's painted on this edge. And apart 
apart from giving it a clean and dust off there's really nothing nothing that one could do under there we'll now pop the hood up and there she is now with the hood up The hood, I would say, is original. It isn't perfect, but then again, it's you know it's 35 years old, older than that actually. The only very obvious imperfection is there's a little bit of fabric here that uh, had obviously been I, I don't know what had happened there at some point in its history. Maybe it had frayed. It doesn't look bad, but of course. The whole, the whole purpose of having a car like this really is to have it with the hood down but it, it is apparently watertight and that's the most important thing and thankfully the rear window hasn't gone opaque which often they do well sorry about the shocking wind noise at the end of that video it really was getting quite difficult uh, 25 miles an hour so a quick postscript then Summing up the car, I would say that's the best Corniche that I've driven. But then again, uh, it is a Corniche too, and they are more advanced. But you know, as a car generally, it's an absolutely delightful thing. Smooth and quiet, fabulous engine, gearbox, and axle. Brakes stop surely and in a straight line. Steering is very precise. The paint works gorgeous. The interior, I think that's absolutely splendid. Particularly the woodwork, it's so good. The hood is still original, but again, still serviceable and uh, watertight. I think for the money, it's a lovely car, and I hope, you're, I hope you find the video useful.